I'm Luke and I'm always on the hunt for an exciting mission. They say that money can only fill your pockets, but sharing an adventure can fill your soul. So join me on my pursuit to find my next epic adventure. Sudan looking to load some provisions and move on to Oman. We are downtown Sudan. Man, this place is intense. How are you? But the people are so beautiful. They're always smiling and happy. Amazing. 17,000, I don't know what it's called, Sudanese money, but I don't know how much this is in any other currency, so we know we paid 17,000. He said if, if the electricity now come, it will be ready, no problem. Sudan, the city of Sudan or the port of Sudan here, this might be one of the poorest places I've ever been. It is derelict like incredible but the people are so kind and nice and happy Sudanese people really have a nice way about them We're giving Jeannie a good old scrub and man she needs it a month's worth of salt is sort of built up my boy, Arno and Frida. Hey Frida! They're going to be sailing northbound to Europe and we're going southbound to Oman. And it's really good to meet you, bro. Yeah. Yeah? Good life. I'm sure we will uh, come across each other one more time. Good times. Boat washing. Sudan done. We have got everything we needed. Three days in Port of Sudan, well, two and a half days. And we've got our diesel, we've got our petrol, we've got our gas, we've got fresh water, we've got everything we need. And it's actually been a, a, a nice little stay. A little frustrating at times, but it's Sudan. Day three from leaving the Port of Sudan, sailing south down the Red Sea. And we still have no wind. We got a, a little bit of wind yesterday. I don't know, maybe two to four hours worth of wind. Uh, so we've done 167 miles and probably 20 of that was sailing. The rest is like we're doing right now, just motoring along. The sea is beautiful, we had some dolphins around us this morning, it's stunning, but man, we need some wind. So we are day four from the port of Sudan. We are sailing towards the Gulf of Aden to exit the Red Sea. It's been a good day, a lot of fish on the back of the boat, we caught some nice fish today. There's been a lot of seagrass underneath the boat, so we've had to dive out a bit of seagrass off the propeller. But it's late evening, sun is setting behind me and we're busy motoring uh, back onto our ley line so that um, we can sail back downwind or back across the wind more like. We're on a beautiful island called Darat Kab. Darat Kab, what a good name. Yeah, it's a real amazing find. It's about 40 miles off the Sudanese coast. And we are boat alone out here and uh, we're just going to the sort of windward side, uh, the Tuluid side of the island 
um, to find a little anchorage for the night. We'll stay, there's not much wind. And uh, we've been fishing all day, really. We've been around sea life all day. It's been fantastic. We've got a, we caught a nice big um, cooter this morning, King Mackerel. And then we lost the GoPro with all the footage. But we've got a bread in the oven and we've got nice fresh kingfish. It's gonna be a good night. Seventh day uh, leaving Port Sudan. We are trying to exit the Red Sea, so we have Yemen on our one side and Eritrea on the other. We're inside the traffic separation scheme in the narrow channel trying to exit, and we've got 40 knots plus. That's what 40 knots looks like. We are getting a shellacking. <laughs> We're in Djibouti. Hustle today, uh, trying to figure out how to get in here and getting agents and trying to figure out how it is to get diesel and money drawn and SIM cards, etc. We're being hit by a pretty serious piece of weather. It's just a big rain squall, you know. It's jacked from 18 knots to 56, it's averaging about 44 now. I've got a tiny little panty on the main, I've got no head sail. And I'm just sort of creeping sort of across the wind. We're more or less actually on course, which is nice. But the weather got jacked really quickly. It's raining now, there's lightning around us. But we managed to get the boat back under control. That was a little hairy. That's the kind of stuff that really turns boys into sailors. <laughs> well, after that squall that hit us, managed to get the boat back under control. No major damage, we did snap a sheet line, um, which is easily easily replaceable. We've actually just changed it already. Um, and it's raining, so we're busy, uh, Eugene's busy soaping the boat up, um, trying to use a little bit of the rain and keep our canvases clean and keep the dodger clean, which is really nice. So the wind's actually changed a little bit from starboard, um, on, the, on the bow of the starboard side, to a little bit behind the beam, which is the first time we've had the wind behind us in two weeks. So it's really nice, it's only about 20 knots now. And we're chugging along quite nicely at four knots. Um, but yeah, that score was pretty intense. That went from 18, 20 knots to 58 knots. And it went, and I checked the GoPro, and it's less than eight minutes. Oh yeah? Unreal. We're being approached by a small fishing boat here. It's not a good situation. I've got the radio with me. They just don't seem to be tracking. They're tracking straight towards us, yeah. Uh, so we're a little nervous. We're off the coast of Yemen, yeah, but we're only 150, 140 miles from Salala. And this boat's full of people. That's not good. So the situation is okay, resolved. Um, very sort of threatening looking guys, four guys in a boat, but I could see there was markings on the side of the boat in terms of numbers and names. Um, I'd be surprised if a pirate's boat had markings and names that you could identify the boat. Um, they just came past and had a good look at us and moved on. There was a wave or two, which, which was okay. Get your heart rate up a little, huh? And uh, we got going into battle stations and <laughs> But uh, anyway, we've got a bullfish behind this rod. It's a big Kona, and he's busy. Uh, yeah. oh. He's busy billing it. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. There we go. There we go. Leave it. Leave it. Don't touch it. See if he jumps. There, 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 there he goes. There he jumps. Marlin. Oh wow! Look at him jump. Fish on.
just landed a striped marlin. Fantastic little uh, fish, about 40, 50 kilos. Got him onto deck, got the hooks out safely, got him released safely. But Genie's first marlin. Yes. Whoop, whoop. So we, this is the lure that caught the marlin, and he's absolutely, you can see, destroyed it. The, the rubber sort of come off the Kona. So I fashioned, this is the only Kona we have. So I fashioned uh, sort of a repair job on our lure, with a little squid on the end and a few cable ties holding her together. Maybe she lasts for another fish. Wow, what a fantastic day. We've had so much life around us. We've had four bull, bullfish behind the boat. Two of them I think were sailies. We landed a, a striped marlin and we had a nice big marlin, blue marlin that just broke us off this morning. It was just way too big for us to handle. And it's so fantastic just being in a place that, you know, on a yacht with three little shitty rods to, to raise four bullfish in a day. It's just incredible. Such a pleasure to be here. I've seen whales and dolphins and flying fish and little tunas and it's just incredible seeing the abundance of life in this area. It's fantastic. long trip and uh, we will be loading a few things here and uh, then making our way to Muscat. Uh, Eugene caught a huge Dorado this morning, amazing fish, uh, caught it in the green water, um, probably close to 20 kilo Dorado, fantastic catch. <laughs> 